Greece finally gets a deal done while attention remains focused on the looming fiscal cliff. Futures are close to flat as constructive digestion continues to support this new fledgling rally. I'm Brittany Umar and the Morning Call starts right now. Good morning, I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar with The Street, and together we bring you Morning Call. So last Tuesday we discussed the ingredients we would need to have a fledgling rally, and we have one now. So now the question, Scott, remains, can it continue, or will it need to have some digestion first? Well, I think yesterday was the first day that we saw some digestion after Friday's continuation. But the same way we saw two days of digestion after that Monday follow through to Friday's reversal. So it's it's all a process and right now I think the, prep, the process itself is, is conducive for higher prices. So at this particular point I think you have to be neutral to positive versus neutral to negative and just pick your sectors, pick your stocks and use a tier system to trade around them. And what would you say are the levels that we should be watching in the S&P right now? Well, let's take a quick look. I'll show you the chart on a, on a quick macro and micro basis. Here's the macro basis. If you remember, look at this October 4th outside day, led to a really big move before we digested and then went in the first quarter. Here's your head and shoulders top before the, the mini correction into the summer. There was your other outside day right there, your June 4th outside day that led to a nice rally. So here we are. Okay, we, I think this was November 16th, about a week and a half ago or so. You take a close look here and you will see, you know, here's your outside day. There's your follow through showing commitment, showing appetite for stock down in this area after a 9% or so move. Then we had two inside days to consolidate and within those inside days you saw some nice leading stocks poke their head out. Then Friday on the holiday you had some continuation. I know a lot of people weren't there. I know the volume wasn't great but if you were long stocks you made money. So yesterday we opened down what six seven handles held higher stayed in this groove. So I think another day or so like this above 1397 or so, I think we take out 1409 and we'll be seeing the 50 day, which stands around 1425. Seems like this might be following the same footsteps as the other two outside days that we saw. Would yes. you say? And, and we always look at past type of patterns and you saw in those patterns, you saw the outside day, you saw appetite, you saw commitment, and that's what we're seeing right now. So I do think again, it, it, it pays or it's more conducive for owning a portfolio of stocks, not a hundred stocks, but like four to seven stocks that you know pretty well that you could trade using a tier system, that you can have a hedge. And when you're in this type of environment, like this was the same type of environment we saw in the first quarter where we trended above the 8 and 21 day, made it pretty easy to hold on to uh, you know, a bunch of stocks. And then you saw the same thing August, September. So when you're in a corrective phase, you go to tactical. When you're in some type of fledgling rally, you don't have to go all in. But I think it's more conducive to owning a bit more risk appetite or, or, or positions versus just trying to tactically, you know, scalp. So do you think the market makes new highs before the end of the year? <laughs> That's what a lot of people keep asking. And I, I don't think you need to know that now. I think you need to measure it every day and see how the leaders are acting. I do think we could see 1425 before we see 1380. So if you want to pin me to something, I would say the hot, you know, we like probabilities, right? So the probability of higher prices, if we could digest above 1397 or even just say 1388, which would be a third of that move off that November 16th low. And I do think, is there a chance of making new highs? Yes, but do you have to know that right now? No. All you have to know is that we're in a more conducive environment for a bit more risk versus tactical and versus more cash. Well, speaking of leading names, let's discuss some that have been acting really well as of late. Apple obviously has been roaring back to life, looks set for strong holiday sales. Where is the next level it might get tested? Well, the 200 days like right in front of it. And sometimes it definitely poses like the big stick as a resistance. So if you look at the chart of Apple, you've had many different entries here. Okay, first things first was your red dog reversal right here. Uh, this was 522. I, would, I think I was giving a, a seminar in Vegas as it was happening. And I said, look at this red dog reversal. It's pretty potent. That's when I got long on my virtual trade floor. You had nice follow through thereafter. And then what happened? It held higher, held the top third of this major range then start to poke its head up here, give you another entry above 572-ish, clean yesterday as the market digested. And now I think it really wants to tag this 598 or maybe a bit higher. I do think that it's better to trim some longs into this move versus initiate new longs because it has traveled a long way. And I know if you take a, a step back and you'll see it's still well off that 700 high. But again, from 505 
to now it's opening around 593-ish. I just think it's a bit more tricky now is when usually everyone starts getting really bullish. You know, I'd just be a little cautious because you do have a, a big, uh, big area of resistance right in front of it. So just you know, be a little bit more selective in your pricing. Now, Amazon had its sixth up day in a row yesterday with the holiday shopping season in full swing. Should we expect it to keep going higher or should we expect some digestion? Well, it'd be nice to digest to get a better setup for traders, but sometimes it just doesn't. But doesn't mean you have to be involved. So some guys are just trying to short it because like, oh, it's up six days in a row. It has to stop. It never has to do anything. And if you look at Amazon, Amazon never broke the 200-day moving average. That's why its move was so potent to the upside because during a corrective phase, what you want to do is find relative strength. And Amazon did show you relative strength as Apple broke the 200-day and went well below it. This held it, so the snapback was pretty fierce. And if you look here, you'll see you know, this is Amazon holding the 200-day, a little bit of a different pattern. Okay, also still above this gap from, from way back when. So here you go. Um, you know, elevated move up usually. Uh, it's not that way for, for up moves, but coming into some resistance. So I would love to see Amazon just digest a little bit um, and hold above this area, you know, hold above this uh, 240 or so, and then maybe give us another little trend line to trade against for an entry. But if it doesn't, I'll just stay away. But I'll know that if it continues, it's just showing you that there is an appetite for risk and you can look for other setups out there. And eBay put in a fresh new high yesterday with its big gain. Where might it hit resistance? Well, it broke through there yesterday, and eBay is a good example of something showing power, that you could be a stock picker. People say you can't pick stocks, but I think that's bull, you know what. Anyway, <laughs> with eBay, um, you know, it's Cyber Monday, everything's online, and, and that's where it, we're going in this world. So eBay has been uh, firing on all cylinders. It's good to see, even though I wasn't involved in it, you know, or a lot in the community, so I guess guys in the community work because it's been on the go-to list, that a stock like this, a leader, could break out and make new highs because in a faulty environment, typically they try and break it out and fail it and they use it for distribution. So this is showing you that maybe this fledgling rally can continue. And if you look at the chart of eBay, you will see guys got rewarded for playing this breakout yesterday. Nice gap and go to the upside, close near the highs. You, you take a look at it. You know, it's that multi, multi, multi-month high showing you can be a stock picker. You know, buying this moving average, which uh, was what, the 50-day each and every time. Look where the 200-day was. So this held a lot higher. I think holding the 100-day, that's what it was right here. So with that said, if you look for stocks that are showing relative strength during the decline, as tech went well below the 200-day, this held higher. So it gave you clues that this is something to turn to when the market bounces and it did what a, a leader should do and break out to new highs. And Yahoo's another one continuing to show power. The stock just put in a new high at 19. So should we wait for a pullback? here? Yeah, I don't think you, you, you jump into it. I've spoke about Yahoo over the course of the past two months, the channel. I love to look at big channels because once they break, they continue. And this one, the entry was really after the last earnings, right around 1660. We talked about it. So I know everyone's upgrading it now, but I do think it's a little uh, more risky to do up here. If you look at Yahoo, uh, on a, on a short-term basis, look at this channel. Okay, This was a, a really nice channel that we talked about many different times. Here's when it held higher broke out, showed commitment above it. This could have been your entry at 1660. So buying up here near 19, I don't think it's that prudent. But you go to your weekly chart, okay, if you want to look at some of the 2013, you know, look at the size of this channel on the weekly chart. Very, very big, just poking its head above it. So at this point, a little bit of a pullback would be nice. And then to me, it seems as if, you know, if they keep continuing to, if it continues to act well and the CEO keeps, um, you know, firing off well, what's her name, Meyer or something of that nature. But anyway, I do think more on the weekly chart, it could see something closer to 23, which I think where, is where Goldman put its upgrade on for next year. And you were focusing on Facebook last week. The stock was just upgraded. It finished the day yesterday with more than an 8% gain. So where's next resistance? Well, it just goes to show you that you can enter these things the right way. I know it was a horrendous IPO and it failed a few times, but if you stay with it and wait for the right pattern, you can be rewarded. The stock does not remember when you bought it if it didn't work. So if you look at Facebook now, what I saw again was a lower channel that it was acting well in. So we go to the chart here, you will see that this is the lower channel. Okay, This was obviously when the IPO came out and it was mispriced and it was just gross. Came down, tried to stabilize here, went sideways, broke this area. I remember being on Kramer saying it could continue higher if it were to break above this mini area. And what happened? It didn't. We got stopped out. Big deal. Take your loss, move on. Then it continued lower. So coming into the end of this channel right here, look, look, look at it this time. Okay, 
here's your bottom end. This is when everyone said the, the floor was going to fall out on that big 800 million share release. It didn't. It bounced. And then it was holding higher. This is why it became very interesting to me is that you had to move back to resistance, okay, where the gap started, held higher. So I started buying it, I think, in like the 2275, 23. And then what happened? Finally had some power, went into the gap, boom. And then you had your nice move to 26. So now it's opening up. Uh, the gap gets filled here, which typically you know stops a move or stalls at 26.73. But overall, I think this was a, a really nice trade. Hopefully, some guys caught it. Now I'd like to see it go sideways, and I do think that um, you know the, the 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 whole attitude on Facebook changed a little bit, and it can continue higher. So traders will keep it on the radar and trade it accordingly. I still have some, but I have less than I had in this area. Well, coming up, we're going to go in the trenches with commodities. But first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live, where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side. We're back and talking metals. Let's talk the GLD first, which had nice digestion yesterday after its big move on Friday. What do you expect in the coming sessions? Well, if we see more, di more digestion like this, I think it's going to make an attempt to take out that 1,800 an ounce. So if you recall back over the summer, we started getting very excited about the metals when you had a nice tight pattern. Uh, I think it was in August. Actually, silver led the way, which we'll get into. You saw it break out above this level on the GLD. I'll show you the chart. So first time it broke out was right around here, right in August, and you had a really big move right back to the prior resistance. But it wasn't strong enough to bust through that 1,800 an ounce. So what happened? It pulled back, pulled back, tested the 200-day, held above that August breakout, showing a, a, a higher low. So now from this area, we were talking about potentially re-entering, which we didn't. I chose silver, but I'll get into that. You had a nice little triangle here, broke above it. The buy price was around 168, 168 half, and here you are. You want to take even a closer look. What I'd like to do is I'd like to see um, gold hover, or at least hold, half of this igniting bar you know, to show some commitment. If it can go sideways for a session or so, I do think you get another entry above this uh, 170 area, and then you have major resistance around 173, half 174. But overall, a lot of gold bugs are expecting really big things out of gold. I'm not a gold bug, but technically it's still, you know, you look at this overall trend, it's been really strong. Um, yes, we've been digesting the majority of this year with not a lot of movement, but at some point it changes. So right now you have this 170, and then you have 174, and then you have the historic high. So, you know, keep gold on the radar, it's acting a bit better. Now you mentioned you chose silver, the SLV is also looking good. The uptrend since early November is still intact, trading above all key moving averages. Where might you add? I'm going to look to see how it acts. <laughs> I'm, right now, I, I played the breakout. I took a little bit off, and now I'm just staying with like a tier one. And if it starts moving again, I'll add to it. And if you look here at the chart of silver, you will see that look at this downtrend. Okay, here's the highs, lower high, lower high. You know, finally, it broke this downtrend. You had a nice entry, which we had over the summer. Okay. Um, and then you know, it had to move up, failed, came back and retested this broken trend line and started to go again. So here we go, get a closer look so you could see. You will see that um, last little f area of, uh, of interest was right here. Okay, that, at least for me it was. That's when I said, okay, I'm going to start getting involved. I bought a little bit on um, around 32.30 ish, and then you had a nice move. Look, yesterday, uh, very, you know, very, very small day. We call that an inside day. I'll give you even a closer look here. Um, and, and it held higher. So I would think the longer it holds above uh, you know, the top half of this igniting bar, the, the higher the probability that it takes out this two-day high and continues. And then the same thing with, um, with gold. You have a, a macro resistance area. Here you have is right around 34-ish. If you can get above 34, a lot of guys are saying 36 or more. So at this point, I think silver is in motion. It's showing relative strength. It's above all these major moving averages. So it's something to keep your eye on, and I'm going to try and stay along it. Okay, let's do some quick hits here. We have talked about setups that you've seen coming in. MasterCard being one of them. It's still trading above rising key moving averages. So where's next resistance? Uh, 485 to 488. If it could break and hold above that, we might see a breakout to new highs like we saw with Visa earlier um, in the last few sessions. And Bank of America was another name that you saw setups coming in. It broke its winning streak yesterday with a small loss. What now? 
I just think healthy digestion, just like a, like a lot of other things. And as far as Bank of America, um, this stock within this group is showing relative strength on the daily chart. I think we get a daily chart move through 10 bucks, and then on the weekly chart, I think it's something like I've been saying, you throw in the drawer because, in my opinion, it could see 12 to 14 next year, which is a nice percentage move. So if you look at the chart, like what we have right here, you know, here is major resistance. It's hard to tell right there, but um, you go across. Here is the high back in March, right? This was around 10, came back to it, wasn't ready to break through it, came back to it again, wasn't ready to break through it. Now, if it could hold higher, if it could stay above 969.70, I think finally it breaks above this $10. I think finally we, we get this move, which would be a, a nice trade. It could happen the next day or so, who knows? And then on the weekly chart, you want to see where there's room. Uh, if it starts to get above this area, look how nice and tight it is. Uh, really, the next area is 11 to 11.44. And then I think the objective for next year could be 12 to 14. And Intel had another up day with almost a 1% gain now, just about touching its 8-day, which has been putting pressure on the stock. So will we see more selling pressure? Um, it's going to probably pose a little resistance, but I think that people are looking for something that can make them money back, so they're trying to make excuses that Intel could bounce. So with that said, if you're not long Intel, because Intel hasn't been something to be long this year, you look at this trend. I've talked about it so many times. You know, here was your trend of high, lower, high, lower, high. This was your out in Intel when it broke around 25. So down here, if you want to try it for a, a trash for treasures trade, maybe it's even a good January effect type trade. It could see 2060 to 2176, but just make sure you have your stop at this low, which is 1923. And finally, Lulu acting better. The 50 day now hanging just above it. Can it reclaim it soon? Yeah, it looks okay. Um, you see a nice defined pattern. It's not um, a blockbuster type scenario, but Lulu, you know that it could uh, stretch just like their pants at any time they want. <laughs> All right, that was a bad joke. Uh, <laughs> here it is. Look at this. Look at this trend line here. This is your major trend line, okay? And then here is another area that it couldn't get through, but what is it doing? It's holding higher. So you want to take a closer look here. You could see that, uh, you know, you have a bit of a reversal yesterday. It really needs to start getting above. Uh, 72.77 in order to get moving, and then it's going to have to break this downtrend to see new highs. So, you know, at this point, I think you could be in a tier one if you want to be in a tier one, and then add it once it gets above 72.20 for it to get in motion to get back to these highs. All right, so wrapping things up here, where is your focus heading into trading today? My focus is on what's moving. My focus is on what's acted best during the corrective phase. So I'm going to try and hold what I'm holding. I think I have six longs and one short. You know, depending on where the market is, you massage your positions. Okay, if, you, if your stock's in a good spot where you have a nice technical pattern, you add to it when it gets in motion, you sell some and hold some. When you're trying to hedge a situation like I've been doing with my spiders late last week and, and it just runs into the close like we saw Friday during the holiday, you add a little bit more to your spider hedge, you know, so you take down your risk and then you get a down opening like you saw yesterday, you cover some and get back to your normal size. So have positions you know, trade around them, have a hedge, trade around that. I know it's a bit more active than you might want to be during the holiday season, but when there's money to be made, you get active and you, and you, and you kind of press a little bit when the iron's hot because we all know when volume dries up and the action starts to um, you know, not be as conducive, we all wish it was here. So while it's here, take advantage of it. All right, that's it for us this morning. Have a great day, everyone. Happy trading. Thank you.